Welcome to the latest edition of Access All Areas Explores. As you can see, we're at Goodwood Motor Circuit for the Goodwood Revival. Since it was launched by the Duke of Richmond in 1998, it's become synonymous with beautiful automobiles and outrageous costumes. The attention to detail here is remarkable throughout the site, as you'll see in this film. And among the suppliers responsible for making this event outstanding is Kudus Event Hire. So I understand Kusa Venter Hire has been working with Goodwood for what, nearly 10 years. Yeah. So obviously it's not just dry hire. How has the relationship kind of expanded and evolved during the past decade? So when we first approached Goodwood, it was very much on a sort of contractual basis. And then as we got to know them and work with them and, and understand the events and the estate, we've kind of, kind of almost, not embedded, but we've had a really strong relation with the event team. And as they've grown, and we've supported them. And the guys that we were with when we first started doing members in, I think, 2015, have now grown up through the through the Goodwood team and they're leading the events. So we kind of we bring our knowledge to the table of all the events and our sort of history and, uh, and, and the kit, the degree of kit that we've got, I suppose the depth of kit that we bring. And um, so from, from the plastic toilets to the showers and the campsites to the modular buildings to support, here to support like the caterers and all the, the wardrobe space for the, for the Goodwood Actors Guild. Hi, I'm Dan Garlick, the motorsport director here at Goodwood. Um, joined in 2012, so I've been here for 11 years now, and I'm responsible for delivery of uh, Festival of Speed, the Goodwood Revival, our Goodwood members meeting, and uh, more recently, Goodworth as well. So Daniel, since it was launched by the Duke of Richmond in 1998, how has the event evolved and, and grown, in, both in terms of its complexity and also the capacity each day? Yeah, so as you said, we've been going since uh, 1998. So it was launched uh, a year to the day from 1948, 50 years uh, later from when it was initially a world-class motor circuit. It ran as a circuit from 48 to 66, um, post-war. Uh, the, the fighter pilots used to rush back home uh, at the end of the day and that's where it developed into uh, the, the circuit. So the revival was brought back to you know, celebrate that whole period from 48 to 66 and the racing that went on there, but also the, the whole lifestyle piece from that uh, period. So in 98, we, we were about 25,000 a day, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but it tended to be Sunday sales led. Uh, the, that's kind of the highlight of the, the racing was on the, on the Sunday. Uh, so that tended to be the day that attracted the, the most visitors because uh, it was probably a real core motorsport audience. Then. And I think what we've seen really is as you look a, a, around now is it Everyone that comes makes so much effort to, to be at Revival. They, it's really now about um, sort of celebrating that whole period and a really immersive experience. We've got sort of over 200 actors here that help make part of that, singers and dancers and entertainers and people that just come up and talk to you. Uh, and, and the whole public now dress up as well. So it's become much more immersive. And, and we've seen now that that's been great with the success of the event. We're now at 50,000 a day, sell out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And interestingly, as that crowd is changed perhaps to a more immersive day out at an event crowd then actually Saturday is now the, the lead so it all sells out but Saturday leads uh, even though the key racing is perhaps arguably still on the Sunday so I think it reflects that we've got motorsport fans but also now the the event uh, enjoyment fans as well. So it's a pretty vast operation I mean in terms of the number of timeline if you like a number of people and number of units that you supply can you give us an idea of the scale? Yeah, I think people don't realise how what is involved in Goodwood, and it's not just revival and fires. The, the whole event season starts in April, where we're building for for members meeting. And then we it evolves into Goodwood, and then into Festival of Speed, and then we move to Qatar Festival, and then in between that, there's various track days. There's um, three Friday nights at the race course. There's race days. So we're kind of we have a presence on site, but I think it's almost five months. So we're quite integral to how the events evolve into each other and, and part of that is the, the sustainability of not always taking everything away, having it here, making it kind of work more efficiently. How much of a focus is there on sustainability when you're bringing this event to life? We're proud to be uh, ISO 2012 1 accredited which we gained in 2012. We were one of the original test cases back around the London Olympics when that was brought in um, and that's that's great because it keeps us honest. We, we do all the all the small things that you can do, you know, the no plastic serveware, the recycling bins, using the one cup cup scheme for, for, for yeah, the pints of beer. So all of that's in place, but it just keeps nudging you along. So as an estate, we've now got a large biomass boiler, which provides 
hot water and power in a green uh, manner uh, to uh, the Google Hotel, the house, large part of the festival of speed site, which is great. We've got solar panels here at the circuit help for power of revival. And we're always looking at what we can do better. And we committed because of 2012-1 really that, right, what, what's the next step? And we then have brought in biodiesel to all the temporary power sources at all of our events now over the last three years, thirds at a time, because it is an expensive change to make. Yeah. Uh, so this year, I'm really proud that we've been 100% biodiesel across uh, all the generators on the events this year, which is great. And that really you know, makes a huge impact on the carbon side. So yeah, I think it, it's, it's, it's core to what we believe. As an estate overall, I think we, we do a, a pretty good job. We're, we're always, we just, I think, I like to think that it's a sort of how we are as a brand, really. We get on with things, doing things properly and correctly, and we don't shout about it, perhaps, as others might, but I think our credentials are, are pretty good, and it, and it is what drives us as an estate all, all of the time, anyway. And I guess the other thing, operationally, when, when I spoke earlier about working with suppliers for you know, long periods, what that enables us to do is build up that understanding and trust with suppliers. So, QDOS is a, probably the best example where We've got events over the year, but with large gaps. But by working with them, we can stop lorry movements, yeah, or massively reduce them. We, we can look plan with Qdos or whoever it might be, what kit we can bring in for the season, leave it in place, and make yeah, make significant savings there. So that's something that again comes from that long-standing relationship, which is great. And it's obviously quite a complicated environment in terms of you know you've got a motor track, you've got an aerodrome, you've got you know, and there's a, there's a obvious a real attention to detail in terms yes. of creating this kind of fantasy environment of you know times gone. By. Yeah. Um, what, how does that affect the way you work in, uh, you know, on the site? It's, every, it's good. Every event is very different. Uh, the ones that are on the motor circuit are very restricted by the motor circuit being live, and also you, you've got then an airfield, so there's restrictions about what you can or can't do and when you can do it. And then you move to the house for Festival of Speed, which is basically a green field site. So that we can't do anything until then the track weighs down, and it's being very respectful of obviously the Dukes front garden if you yeah. want, and, and, yeah. and the whole property and the, the history that goes with it so um, everything is quite unique and the same with the race course and there's there's bits at the race course that you know that you need to look after or not go near and you can't move a high out there so and it's that knowledge and I think that's where the relationship is really strong is that we have that we have a team that have worked on and off on the events for 10 years and they know the other people here like the green keepers at the golf course and they know the mechanics on the on the motor circuit. So it's all those other little relationships which enable us to do what we do and do it efficiently where so you're not always bothering the events team every two minutes going, oh where does this go? Where does this go? And it's like, well we kind of we know, we'll double check, but then we'll do it and we'll make sure it's in the right place. And it's it's adding that value back. Absolutely. And in terms of the you know the kit that you supply, I mean how how's that sort of changed in terms of you know obviously you're kind of always looking to you know to supply something new and this of a hybrid version or a kind of update version of previous kit so can you sort of talk us through a little bit about kind of some of the newer gear that you're you're delivering yeah, I think to the site we've always tried to get away from a, the traditional anti-vandal porter cabin as ours are very user led so therefore nice big windows blinds better lighting the newer cabins that have come through like the production offices much better insulation they've got um, led lighting so we're trying to think about energy usage keeping them as efficient as possible better insulation the doors are wider so they allow access for anybody so they're accessible so it doesn't matter who is on site or who's using them they don't sort of they don't prevent anybody from using them one of the wonderful things about goodwood revival is the attention to detail you can clearly has been paid everywhere really every kind of corner of the venue is, is, is kind of beautifully decorated how much of a focus is that i mean you know in terms of this this amount of time and energy that goes into bringing this venue alive. Absolutely, I think yeah, the attention to detail is the, is the key aspect. Um, you know, that we, get, we get the basis of the event built, but it, you're absolutely right, it's that last 10%, which is all important. Um, we're very proud of what we're trying to achieve at Goodwood Inns, the staff, but we tend to end up working with suppliers for quite a long time as well. It takes quite a while for a new supplier to really get the finish we're trying to achieve. Um, I've talked about you know, that we have sort of 200 actors and all the staff that are going to treat customers and make, really make them feel immersed, but the suppliers get that as well. So um, probably the first few years for suppliers get getting on board with us, and then after that people tend to work with us for a long time and are arguably just as proud as what we deliver as a, as a group, uh, as Goodwood staff are. So it's a real big team effort from the staff that work here permanently, to the temp staff that we grow for the event, to all of our supply base. So it's, yeah, it's a yeah, great, great all, all working on that. So you've got structures of all shapes and sizes throughout the whole site, you know, covering everything from you know makeup rooms to trailers full of costumes to you know event control. It's pretty impressive. 
I mean, obviously, accessibility is a key thing as well. Yeah. So, I mean, how much uh, we can see here, we've got a, a accessible shower. But um, I mean, how much attention do you pay to that really across the, across all of the um, structures that you provide? I think it's really important now, and it, it's something that all event organisers are much more aware of making everything inclusive. And as, as we as a supplier have to take that on board. So within the fleet, you'll see as you come in to collect a ticket, there's an accessible ticket office which has got a drop window. So throughout all the all the toilet blocks, there's accessible toilets, um, baby changing facilities as well. And then throughout the campsites which we supply, there's wet rooms which is a shower and a toilet in one, or there's an individual sort of accessible shower. Um, with same with all the cabins, all the cabin doors are, are wide enough to take wheelchairs through. But the medical centres are designed so you can get access through, from a mobility buggy, um, also a stretcher as well. So all these things we kind of factor into now what we what we design and, and what we use and have on the fleet. And we've also, for another client, we've developed a high dependency unit, which is um, it's like a changing cabin which has a hoist in it as well. So it, it is for that real high dependency level. So we've right. and quite yeah. uh, events need to offer this now. They need to be inclusive. So you find ourselves in another fascinating space on, on site. Where are we now? So, so this is the, uh, the, the mess, one of our uh, key enclosures, and we find ourselves in the operations room in the middle of uh, you know, the, the, the war period. So, and I mean, this is, we talked about attention to detail, and I think that this is kind of it. Uh, we've got you know, part of our, uh, our cast in the background uh, working away with the plotting table. And it's just that's the fun, that's what people love as they come into the enclosure. You know, is that people to, to talk to them and get them involved in, in the planning on the operations. Brilliant. And how closely involved is the Duke in this? Obviously, he was his kind of brainchild, but like, how is he involved in like every detail, or is it kind of a bigger, bigger helicopter viewpoint? No, the, the Duke, he, he loves it. He's, I mean, he's a photographer as a, a younger man, and his, his attention to detail is, is second to none. It, it very much comes from the Duke, our obsession for perfection, uh, and it, it's great because when when the, the chairman, yeah, the person at the top, wants everything just right, then that really rubs off on the team, uh, and it really pushes us. You know, so every little detail, whichever animal whichever place it is you know the authenticity is what it's all about because it, it's the little details that really make it for people and bring it alive and that that definitely comes from the Duke we meet with him every week and he you know he's keen to know exactly what what's right what's not uh, and we're 25th year the, uh, of revival and so he's clearly doing something right and I think we just uh, aspire to, to get it right for him